Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do a summary of grade 11 trigonometry. Trigonometry covers various areas. We are going to first start with questions where you are asked to not use a calculator. Right, 5 cos theta is equal to negative 4. Solve for sin theta plus cot theta and your restriction is 0 to 180 degrees. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to get our ratio alone. We know which equation to work with because when you are solving, you use an equation. And the only equation that stands here is the one with the equal to sign. Right, so I'm going to say 5 cos theta is equal to minus 4. You get your cos alone. So you have cos theta is equal to minus 4 over 5. When we are told to solve, we're going to first get our ratio alone. So I got 5 cos theta is equal to minus 4. I divide by 5. I got cos theta is equal to minus 4 over 5. Now cos is x over r. Using Pythagoras, I now solve for y. When we do Pythagoras, we got y is equal to plus or minus 3. Now we need to use our limit to decide which quadrant am I working in. When we're using our limit, we're going to use our sign and we're going to use the restriction. Our restriction 0 to 180 degrees. Now 0 to 180 is in the first and second quadrant. Then we're looking at cos where it is negative and it is negative in the second and third quadrant. So the quadrant we're working in is the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, the y is a positive value, which means that I'm taking a positive 3 as my answer. We then have r, that is 5, and we have x, that is negative 4. Now how do we answer the question? The question is, what is the value of sin theta plus cot theta? Sin theta is y over r and cot theta is x over y. Looking at the drawing, we know that y is 3, r is 5, plus x is minus 4, y is 3. So we have a final answer of minus 11 over 15. All right, let's go to the next part. Right, we are doing re reductions. Now, reductions, you could have done it in two ways. We have a basic Cartesian plane. All students take coffee. All is positive. Sin and cosec is positive. Tan and cot is positive. Cos and sec is positive. So, each alphabet represents the main ratio and in which quadrant they are positive. What you notice here is your basic reduction. Now, reduction can go two ways. It can go either with the black, which means I'm working with a standard angle that's between 0 and 90, or I'm working with 180 minus something, 180 plus something, 360 minus something. The second type of reduction is the 90. 90 minus, 90 plus, 270 minus, 270 plus. But when you have a choice, you're always going to choose the 180 before the 90. Right, reduction will go two ways. You're going to first choose your reduction. So you're either going to choose your 180, 360, or you are going to choose your 90 and your 270. Right, then how do we work it out? You're going to write your ratio. In both cases, you write your ratio and then you write your values. Then you look at your answer. Now how does reduction take place? Number one, you're going to look at your sign. 
then you're going to put your ratio which stays the same and then you're going to put your value your angle which is the little block Whereas in if you are doing 90 you're still going to write your ratio and then you're going to have 90 minus 90 plus 270 minus or 270 plus then you're going to put your sign but remember your sign is based on your original question then you put your ratio but the ratio is not just any ratio it's the coco which means for sin you'll put cos and for cos you will put sin that is why it is better to use 180 and 360 because there's no adjustment in the ratio and last you will put the value Reduction can work two ways, 180 and 360 or 90 and 270. Now you choose 90 and 270 only when you are stuck. When you see the equation is giving you a bit of a challenge or when there's an odd value, then you choose 90. Now what you would remember is after you do reduction, the answer is going to split two ways. It's going to split into special angles Or identities so reduction is just the introduction of the question then you're going to go to special angles or identities right sin we know it is in the fourth quadrant now fourth quadrant is 360 minus or 270 plus but as I told you you always choose 360 or 180 before you choose 270 only when you're stuck do you resort to 270 and 90. So we have sin is equal to 360 minus 60. Then we have 10, which is 180 minus 45. Now how am I getting these values? 360 minus 60 is going to give me 300, which is what I want. 180 minus 45 is going to give me 135. Then sin 80, I leave it alone. It's in the first quadrant. We don't fiddle unless we have a problem later. Over. Cos, it's in the second quadrant. So I'm going to have cos 180 minus 10. So what we did was we first chose what we're doing and we rewrote them into our ratios. Now let's go for reduction. Sin in the fourth quadrant is negative. Then I put the ratio sin and the angle 60 degrees times 10 in the second quadrant is negative 10 45 I didn't fiddle with my sin 80 cause in the second quadrant is negative cause 10 degrees now if you look sin 60 is a special angle 10 45 is a special angle but sin and cos, 80 or 10, neither one of them are special angles. When you have a sin and a cos that are linked in the sense that the 80 and the 10 actually add up to 90 degrees, then you choose to change one of them by using the 90. So basically we're stuck. We can't go further. We can't use special angles. We can't cancel it then we use the 90. So let us change the sin. Remember when you're using the 90, we're not changing both. We're going to choose one of them and then we're going to change that. So let us choose sin 80. Sin 80 would become sin 90 minus 10. We have our standard values for minus sin 60. It's a special angle. So I'm going to have minus root 3 over 2. Minus 1045 is also a special angle. Minus 1. And then sin 90 minus 10 over negative cos 10. Now what happens to sin 90 minus 10? Because I had used the 90, it's a co-co rule. So I now have...
sin becomes cos 10 because I'm in the first quadrant it's a positive all over negative cos 10 now I can cancel it I still have my negative there you can't cancel the negative the negative doesn't get cancelled so my final answer is negative and negative gives me a positive positive divided by a negative is negative and then root of 3 over 2 times 1 gives me root of 3 over 2 right what you must remember is that when you are doing reduction your first choice is always 180 and 360 your reduction will move towards special angles or identities when you are done doing all your special angles or all your identities and you can see there's an odd one then only do you go to 90 and see if you can change it the best giveaway is when you take the values the angles of these ratios they tend to add up to 90 always now the next thing we need to remember is negative angles negative angles work much like reduction but they confuse us because they don't look normal so to speak now when you have a negative angle the trick is to simply add 360 degrees once you add 360 degrees you're then going to go to your normal reduction let's do the following example right what you would notice is that the first one is sin negative theta if we add a 360 to it we end up with sin 360 minus theta. The next one, you would notice that when we're doing reduction, we don't have theta minus 360. We have 360 minus theta. So, this is not the standard form. How do we get it to standard form? We have to add a 360. Now what happens when we add 360? We are simply left with cos theta. With the next one we have the same problem. The norm is not theta minus 180. It is 180 minus theta. So again we add 360. Now 360 minus 180 gives me 180. So I have 10 and then I have 180 and the sign of the theta is plus, so I've got plus theta. Once you've changed the way the question looks, it's easier because now you've gone back to reduction and from reduction you can solve. Now sin reduction of sin 360 minus theta. 360 minus theta is in the fourth quadrant. The value for sin in the fourth quadrant is negative. So we have negative sin theta times cos theta is done. And then we have 10, 180 plus theta. 10, if it's 180 plus theta, I am in the third quadrant. 10 in the third quadrant is positive. So I got positive 10 theta. Now, as I said earlier, when we're doing reduction, reduction goes two ways, special angle or identities. When I finish the summary for identities, we will come back and complete this question because you will notice we can continue with the sum from here. This 10, we can continue, but we will do that after we do identities. Right. When we are doing identities, the main thing is to make everything sin and cos. We know that 10 theta is sin over cos, cot theta is cos over sin, and then we have cosec theta, which is equal to 1 over sin theta, and we have sec theta, which is equal to 1 over cos theta. So every ratio can always change back to sin and cos. Once you do that, we're doing algebra. Now, algebra is everything from take out a common factorizing, getting common LCDs, any form of algebra becomes handy. And last, we work around the ratio where sin squared theta plus cos squared theta 
is equal to 1. Okay, let's take the following example. Okay, if you look at this example, it looks challenging. But if you follow the steps slowly, you won't have a difficult time. Now the first rule says make everything sin and cos. So what we're going to do is this tan squared theta, we're going to make it sin squared over cos squared times cos squared theta over 1. Now look at what I did. I made this cos squared a fraction. The reason for that is when you have a question that's a fraction, it's easier to see them when you have all the numerators in line and when you have all the denominators in line. The next thing is plus, we have sin squared theta. Now it's over tan squared theta. But to write it over and then have a fraction is difficult. So what we do is, we put a bracket and we say divided by, because that is what this line stands for, it stands for divide. 10 is sin squared over cos squared. So we're not changing the question, but we're writing it so that it is more comfortable for us. Now look at what is possible. The cos squared can cancel with the cos squared at the bottom. That's in the first term. So I'm left with sin squared theta. Plus, we have sin squared theta. And we know that if you take a division and you make a multiplication, what happens to the right hand side fraction is it swaps around. So I have cos squared theta over sin squared theta. It is all your algebra coming in place. Now the sin squared can cancel with the sin squared. I am now left with sin squared theta plus cos squared theta and we know sin squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. Now let us go back to our previous sum. We had minus sin theta times cos theta over tan theta. Now if we write it so that it is more user friendly we have sin theta times cos theta divided by tan theta. We're going to leave our negative sin theta times cos theta divided by what does tan become? Tan becomes sin theta over cos theta. Now we know that we can't divide a fraction so we're going to make it a multiplication and immediately we're going to swap the fraction on your right hand side. So now we have negative sin theta times cos theta over 1 times cos theta over sin theta. The reason I put it over 1 is because it is better to have your numerators in line and your denominators in line. Now I can see that I can cancel the sin theta with the sin theta giving me a final answer of minus cos squared theta. Remember reduction is always going to end in two ways. When you're doing reduction in an exam, you can't stop once you've done reduction. You have to go to either identities like in this question or you have to go to special angles like in this specific question. But either way, reduction doesn't stop in the middle. It's going to be reduction identities or reduction special angles. Thank you for watching.